Okay, so Simon's got lots of interesting things to share, so big it up for Simon. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I've, what I'm going to talk about today is um, using your Raspberry Pi with something called an Arduino. Um, I know kind of two-thirds of you have got Raspberry Pis, and I think, I, I would hope you all know what your Raspberry Pis are, otherwise you're probably in the wrong room. Um, but th how many people have uh, come across Arduino? Oh, okay, good. Right, quite a, quite a big Right, um, so one of the things about the Raspberry Pi is that it has these GPIO ports on that, in principle, you can collect, connect electronics to, and have it control things and turn relays on and off and all that kind of thing. Um, but one of the snags with that is that it's um, the GPIO pins are quite kind of low power and a little bit delicate. So to really make use of them, you kind of need to do some kind of buffering to make use of them safely, to make sure that you're not doing like frying your pie. So an alternative to that, to that is to actually use something that's been out for a long while for doing this kind of input output, and that's the Arduino boards. That's kind of what it's designed for. It's um, a little microcontroller board. Um, this is one. I shall pass it around if anybody wants to have a closer look. As long as I get it back. <laughs> um, so it's it's um, it's very 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 weedy compared with what you get on a Raspberry Pi, um, but that's not really what it's in, you know it's not intended to be a computer. It doesn't even have an operating system. You write a program for it, but that program operates when the thing reboots. No operating systems, no overhead. Um, 2K of memory, um, a tiny amount of flash memory for putting a little program on in C. But it's all about doing input output and simple to control applications. So we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so first of all, um, as Alan said, um, I'm write, I, I write books, uh, mostly about Arduino and other types of open source hardware. And I'll just get the plug in now and then shut up about it. Um, but there are some leaflets here that have got a list of the books that I've published on it. Um, I'm interested in Raspberry Pi um, because I'm in the process of uh, writing a book about it for McGraw Hill. So events like this are great to find out, you know, what exactly the focus of the book should be, so to kind of sort of get what to produce something that's useful to people. So what is an Arduino? As I said, it's a little interface board, just working its way around. It's got a USB connector and it's got a power connector. Um, it can be powered over USB, but the I've been reluctant to do that with the Raspberry Pi just because I don't. Well, I have tried it, to be perfectly honest, and I think partly because I've got a fairly uh, weedy power supply running my Raspberry Pi, it doesn't really get enough. Um, it doesn't really let supply enough current to go all the way through to the Arduino and power it. So today I've got the an Arduino board that's actually got an external power adapter. And its, it's USB connector is connected up to the Raspberry Pi. Arduino comes with its own software, and you write simple little programs for it. So this is the um, blink and LED type um, program. Um, we say we want the LED pin to be an output. We set it high. We delay for half a second. We set it low. We delay for another half second. We go around, around forever, and that makes it flash. Um, There's lots of different types of Arduino, um, just for anybody who's interested in these things. Oops. Uh, and we also get Arduinos that have built-in Ethernet connections, um, built-in built -in USB host. Um, you can get various Arduino for controlling remote control planes and all sorts of things. The other thing that makes the Arduino popular as an interface board is that there's a huge range of plug-in shields you can get. So as you see the board going round, you'll see it's got like a set of header Pins, and you can plug the board on top of it, and you can get both um, boards for Ethernet, uh, motor drivers, uh, controlling relays, um, LCD displays, um, all sorts of sensors, that kind of thing. And you can just plug these on, and you can actually make quite a deep sort of stack, so you, can, you don't just have to have a single shield, not do anything, but lots of things. So this is quite a nice way of adding extra features to your Raspberry Pi to give it extra things to control, because your Raspberry Pi can talk over the USB connection to your Arduino that can do revalues from temperature sensors, turn relays on and off, do all the stuff, proper stuff, hardware type of stuff. 
So I'm going to show you just a, a, a little example. Um, I'm risking doing the live demo, which is probably a disaster. <laughs> so it probably won't work at all. But um, I've got uh, my Raspberry Pi here. And this is connected by the USB connection to the Arduino. Probably worth coming up having a look at it if you want to. Um, and I'm able to show what's going on on my Raspberry Pi because I'm running VNC server on the Raspberry Pi. Um, has anybody discovered that trick as a good way of seeing what's going on on your Raspberry Pi? Yeah, it's great because you don't necessarily always want to have to find a, a TV and a keyboard and mouse to plug your Raspberry Pi into if you're using it next to another computer. So you can run a VNC server and that allows you to share the screen of a Raspberry Pi on any desktop computer that connects to it. So let's have a look at it. So that. Okay, so I think there's really no hope of you being able to read this code, so I won't really try and go through it. But um, what I'm actually running there is um, I've, I've just got uh, there's a, a, a Python program there, um, and all it does is create this little user interface here that's got four buttons on it, A up, A down, B up, and B down. Um, that's the entire program, and it uses a, a, li a library, a Python library called Serial, that just allows you to do serial communications. <coughs> And it's doing the serial communications through the device that actually maps onto the Arduino connected to the USB port. So, will it work? Or do we think that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can say A down, B up, B down. Okay. So, a nice sort of simple demonstration of the sort of thing you could do. Um, you probably wouldn't want, you could just about, with a, with a bit of hard work, um, Ben's GPIO library. I don't know if it, have you, Ben, have you, where's Ben gone? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> have you tried uh, doing um, driving server? Can you generate pulses at the right sort of rate? Uh, no, all I've tried doing so far is LEDs. Right. As sophisticated as I've got. Okay, yeah. It might just about do it because you can get about 800 hertz from the GPIO library. The G GPIO library is another uh, Python library that allows you to, connect, to control the ports. You can now get a Raspberry Pi case with a breadboard interface on the side of it. Alright. And it's got um, buffering and oops, power a bit. Yes, the, there's quite a few um, um, things like the Pi case. Made by the same people the case, the perspective case is on that they've got over there. Alright, okay. Yeah. If you want to find out where they are, find them, and then you'll be able to find the breadboard. Okay. Right, okay. I'll go. Yeah. I'll go for that. Okay. Um, so that's uh, really all I think I've probably actually got time to show you. Um, one of the other things that I have got a demo that I'll probably set up later, and I think we can just come have a look at it, is to um, have the communication go in the other direction. So what, what I've got here is a little um, USB, sorry, ultrasonic. US uh, rangefinder that will um, plug onto the Arduino and then it will measure the distance for whatever it's been pointed at and then report back that to a little, again, a little Python program that just displays it. So I only really got all of this working yesterday, so it's kind of a little bit hurried, but um, I think it sort of demonstrates that really an Arduino and uh, uh, a Raspberry Pi make quite good sort of companions for, for doing this kind of communication. I mean, maybe the Arduino is it a library that will, that will talk to the Raspberry Pi. You're just doing it as a one-off sort of stuff. It's just a one-off at the moment. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's what you need, really, isn't it? To make it easy for yeah. us less than one. To <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's really. Let me show you the script for it because um, you'd be surprised just how. That's the entire script for for the servos. Oh. And most of that. If you get an Arduino program that goes on to two pages, it probably means you made it too complicated. You know, generally speaking, it's really quite uh, concise. It was the communication with the Pi that I was um, Yeah, the communication with the Pi is just um, serial.begin, turns serial communication on, and then um, serial.available checks whether there's anything in the buffer to be read, and if there is, it reads it as a character, and then it's just the four conditions if the character is A, put the server up, down. That's on the other And is it probably the reason to go the other way as well? Just to yeah. Um, yeah, going the other way, you just do, you, you were just on there, you would say, 
Or do you mean what's happening on the pipe? Yeah, do the mean, pipe? You know, like when you're doing your sensor, is the code going the other way? Yeah. A similar shortness? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, all you, all you would do is you'd have um, serial.write, and then you could either send a string or a byte or whatever you wanted. And then on your Python script, all you have to do is have a loop that's uh, listening for incoming um, data on, on that connection. Um, and then and when it receives something, again, act on it like this and display it on the screen. Okay, that's it really. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Simon.